Let's go on to Rincraft. Everyone's favorite craft. Uh, start with the first card. What do you think of people who consider Silent Cloud and... <laughs> hmm, I don't know. Uh, Enchanted Library. At the end of your turn, put a random spell from your deck into your hand. So over two turns, you got two cards. Two spells. Random spell. Decent. Uh, takes up a slot on your board. Not that big of a deal. It doesn't draw them immediately. And it draws end of turn, so you can't use the spell right away. Uh, you, uh, you might play some in D-Shift. On turn two, you're not really doing much other than maybe removing their two drop or... Magic Missile Face. This is better than Magic Missile Face because it draws you two cards. But it doesn't spell boost you, so that's also another thing to consider. Is it Amulet? It doesn't spell boost you, but draws two spells. Maybe you, you make up for it by getting the extra spell. Where like Magic Missile gets you like one spell boost um, and gets you extra card, which might spell boost you. It, gets you, it guarantees you that you're getting two spell boosts. Maybe you prefer to play this in a deck like uh, Earth Rune, where you're playing less spells. So you can kind of like tutor the right spells you want. Maybe this is like you play points, guarantee you get a, a Climatus Curse or something like that. Which actually sounds really good. Yeah, you can, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Run in Earth, in Earth right and you can guarantee that you get like a Petrify or something else like that. You might not want to run Fates. Because if you're running Fates, you're not running much of spell boost cards as well. So if you're, if you're running mainly followers and Earth right cards, and you just have a few spells, this could be pretty good. But it also could be really dead if you just draw those spells before you draw before you play this. You really want to just let them turn 2 or turn 4 or something. Uh, take 2. Got you 2 cards. Pretty good. Decent. Uh, oops. Thanks for the follow, Mike Murphy. Uh, next we have a replay point three two. Earth right gain plus one plus one in ambush. Yeah, this is a pretty good art in uh, arena. Just like looking at it right away. Because stats are good. The stats are fine for arena. Uh, if you earth right, it gets even better. You can go face or trade for something bigger than it. I don't see earth right playing this though in constructed. Because it, they're not really pushing for a face, but actually, maybe with um, Pascal, because it has ambush, so you can kind of like keep an ambush and then Pascal it the next turn. Maybe. Let's see. Aggro Earth right might be a thing. Let's see. What's the new meta gonna be like? We don't know. We assume it's just slower than it currently is. That's all I can say, it's going to be slower. It does have a lot of, Rune has a lot of face damage in general. So maybe we can- maybe this be an aggro card in Earthrite. Does Earthrite- I mean, does Rune have a lot of things in Ambush? This might be like the only stuff- only thing that has, has Ambush in Earthrite. Or I mean in Rune. Yeah, it might, it might be like playable in some kind of aggro variant. We'll see. Because the, 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 some Earthrite cards aren't that bad. You just play like a good Earthrite card and then you play this. Kill an opponent with Flame Rats. Oh boy.
I next we have uh, probably the cutest card in the whole expansion. Dazzling Healer. 3 play point, 2 3. Fanfare, restore 1 defense to all allied followers, spell boost, restore 1 more. Uh, yeah, you don't really want to heal. In this game, healing your followers isn't that big of a deal. They usually die pretty easily, anyways. And if you have like a big follower that you want to heal, it hasn't already died, you're probably winning. Hmm. So dazzling. Protect your face at all costs, yeah. Uh, she's adorable, but I don't know if she <laughs> sees play, but in, in take two, it's actually pretty good. Healing your uh, followers can be good, pretty good in take two. Especially if you're, like, if you're, if you're trading uh, some of their health away. And then you play this at the end of your turn to heal, to heal stuff. Pretty good. And Vampy Chan. Uh, and her stats are decent for, for Take-Two, so yeah, it's good. Hmm. Yeah. Good card. New Earth Rune leader confirmed. I wish, and only wish, right? Halo Golem Earth Right deal three damage an enemy. That's pretty good. That's like, it's like playing a uh, a Crimson Bolt from Earth Right. If your Earth Right can become a Crimson Bolt, I think it's worth playing a four cost four three. This is a. Uh, this is pretty good. Now compared to like a Dragon Warrior, which we usually compare right to Dragon Warrior on the four cost with some kind of removal effect. Uh, it doesn't use the evolve, so consider what's better: evolve or Earthrite. Dragon Warrior has to use the evolve to move something. And he's using Earthrite. Well, I guess most of the time on turn four, you're going to be using the evolve anyways, so it's not like it's a downside. You're using the evolve, it's just that this card doesn't have to, and you can also go face. Uh, pretty pretty big. So I guess I see this card being played in Earth, right? Just because it has the versatility. And you probably gonna have a bunch of Earth rights anyways to throw away. Three levies, three Halo Golems, uh run the ambush card, run mutagenic. Or whatever the card's called, we'll see. I forget what it's called. The Flame Rats card. You just burn your opponent out. Earthright Burn. It's, it's coming at you. Disaster Witch, yeah. So we're gonna have so much burn. Three damage is a lot. To go face when you have 20 health. Just a few, a few things and you're dead. Three snipe, three magic missile. Yeah, you're you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of scary. No, oh, yeah. I guess I'd say it's not take two. Take two is obviously really good. Take yourself take two when you have a chance. If you're uh. Drafting Earthrite, even if you don't draft like enough Earthrites, at least the stats are good for its cost. You prefer a 3-4, but uh, it's not that bad. Uh, next we have the Mage Illusionist. Uh, your average fighter stats, 2 for 2-2. Two, two. Um, Last words, perform Earthrite, summon a magic illusionist. Oh. If you die and you have an Earthrite on the board, you can another one of them. Super sticky. Like, you just like... <sighs> My lady. Uh... It's actually not that bad. If you're playing a, like an aggro deck, and you can somehow get enough Earthrites to like reoccur this a few times, it's kind of really annoying for your punch to move. It just keeps on punching you in the face every turn. Every time you remove it, you just come back because you have a they have an earth right in the board. 
Wasting your Halo Golem Earthrites, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, also with the fanfare would be really kind, of, kind of ridiculous, right? We have, to, we have to like see like how much value you want to get out of a an earth right. Is is earth is it is the earth right worth a two tier to you or is it more than that? Hmm. Worth it's not worth rabbit or worth it's not worse than carrot right. Carrot goes back to your hand. You have to play him again. This guy when he dies he gets to attack the next turn. Carrot you have to play does it can attack so it costs you play points and it can attack. This guy only costs you an earth right. Which may be, may be a considerable cost, uh, depending on how many Earth rights you have. Um, but you can immediately attack the next turn. But I guess your opponent can can kill it, use up Earth right on your board, and then kill it again. Um, so they they have the chance of so like removing it, but it's uh. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to tell me Earth Rites you're going to be chucking around. Three Earth Rites in hand. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I don't see him being that bad. Because stats are like fine for two drop. But one probably better two drops though. Good, yeah, good with Dark Alchemist, yeah. Dark Alchemist is a really good card. Like, imagine turn one Scrap Golem, turn into this. Your opponent's gonna have like a... That's pretty good, that's pretty good already. Turn one Scrap Golem, turn two Illusionist. Yeah, like, we'll have to see. Take two, obviously, you have to pick this up because it's decent. It might be better silver than aside, but he's not like the worst. Next, we have uh, Freshman Lou. You play point one one. Fan fair to put a random card to spell boost from your deck in your hand. Uh, so like a mini, mini Merlin. It's a Babby Merlin. Uh, you can compare this card to uh, Maid Leader. Maid Leader sees play. It's probably sees play. It also, it's not a, it's a card with spell boost, so it also can get followers as long as, and also spells that have spell boost. Mm-hmm. It cycles for your deck, but doesn't. She tutors for your deck for a spell boost, so if you're looking for your D or something, she might get it. But she doesn't spell boost you. Because uh, she's a follower, not a. Well. You're, yeah, like. You can. If you're playing not that many spell boost cards, you can tutor a certain one that you want. Like, tutors are very strong, but I don't know. Like, usually if you're running a spell boost deck, you have a lot of spell boost cards. So you might not get the one you want, and you also want to be spell boosting. Mm -hmm. Um, no, in a spell in a spell boost deck, I mean, in an Earthrite, you run, um, Gates Hand sometimes. Yeah, she fetches Flame Destroyer. That's about it. Like, that's the only difference between her and Merlin. Rather run Library. Yeah, but she has a body of 1-1, one, one, which isn't that great. Uh, just the fact that she tutors may be pretty, pretty strong. But I can't think of a situation right now uh, where you really want to use that. Hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, next we have the Enchanted Sword. Uh, give an ally follower plus two plus two, subtract zero from... Yeah, subtract, it gets cheaper every time you spell boost. Give an ally follower plus two plus two. How cheap does it need to be to be actually good? Probably cost one. If you get this to one, or zero, it's pretty good. Another face card. We a terrible card for top decking. Dragon Bond Mage deck, oh boy. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know where you play this. When you play it with uh, Daria, it becomes Dukas. There's also a spell. And then you play it and uh, bubble your hand again. Bad Blade Mage. Maybe if you want to play ba Bad Blade Mage, uh, three to six, uh, three to six. I mean, four to six, I mean. It's uh, maybe a thing. Yeah, it doesn't seem that good. Pretty bad in, in take two as well, because you're not going to get a lot of spell boosting going on to make this worth it. Yeah, it doesn't get boosted by Clark and Clark. Clark, and Clark. It doesn't really fit in the Daria deck at all. Yeah, I don't really see where you want to play this. <laughs> Enchanted Vials, yeah, I don't know. Seems, seems bad. Here's the Chimera. Uh, 9 play point 4 4. And you're 4 damage to an enemy follower. And you can be cheaper. So it's just a better um, Dread Dragon. That's it. It's better Dread Dragon. Chimera makes you sad because Levy exists. Yeah, Levy just better. But this just doesn't use the evolve, but who cares? Nerf Levy. Uh, yeah, if you have a lot of spell boosting going on, this can be pretty good. I don't see. It's like, Rune has so many good cards, I don't know if this replaces anything. Oh, this is definitely a good tempo play. Uh, in, in take two, if you reduce it like maybe three times, this is actually a really good card. It only needs to be reduced a few times to make it really good in take two. Because of the tempo up frets. So definitely pick up if you have enough spells to get value. Next we have Melvi. Magical Melvi. Uh Fanfare, both players draw cards until each player has seven cards in their hand. But yeah, uh, if you're you're playing a burn deck, you're playing a super aggressive deck, and you just run out your, your, your hand out really fast to kill your opponent, this is a nice way to refill. And if you're playing a control deck, they're not really going to draw that many cards, because they usually have a full hand anyways. Mill rune. Oh. You don't draw. You don't mill anything because you just draw until you have seven. You don't. You don't draw seven cards. That'd be ridiculous. Self mill most of the time, I guess. Unless your opponent's playing um, this card dragon, and then you like just burn them. They burn their deck out for seven cards, or, or like up to seven cards. Yeah, super awkward against uh, another Ekra deck. You don't want to play against another Ekra deck. But we'll see that it actually kind of combos with another card that Rune has. Cool. It's coming up. Take two, you probably don't want to take this, because it fails to give your opponent cards. If they're playing Sword, they usually have some cards in their hand anyways. If you're going first, it's actually okay. Because you're going to be down cards anyways, so you're going to get the better side of the effect. Yeah, if you 
kind of make your deck in a way that you're, you're probably get more value out of the, the draw than the opponent. It's good. Yeah, not bad, not great. Alto stats are uh, a little bit off of um, curve, but it draws you cards, so yeah, that's reasonable, right? Uh, next we have uh, mutagenic, mutagenic bolt. And from all your enemies into flame rats, enemy colors into flame rats. So it's a one-sided board transform. Unlike um, Winter Caprice, which is uh, five play points turn everything into a snowman. This only turns your opponent stuff into stuff. And the flame rats. We'll, we'll take a look at what a flame rat is. Here's a flame rat. I start your turn, deal one damage to both leaders. Uh, yeah. It, um... It happens at the start of their the opponent's turn, because opponent's stuff... Opponents can have uh, flame rats, right? So you can actually play it in a deck that you're trying to burn your opponent, your opponent faster than them, they kill you. Plus, if you're turning their stuff into into one one, then you have your actual board. That's pretty good, because you, you can easily kill one ones if you have a board of, of any kind. <laughs> and you maybe play in a situation where you actually want to burn your opponent. Maybe you can play in a situation where they can't kill their own rats off. And they just have a bunch of 1-1 one, one rats and burning them each turn. Blood would love you for this, yeah. Turn all, turn all their bats into flame rats. That's uh, pretty bad. Forest doesn't really care about this either, because they're they're just a fairy turning into one ones. The ones who really really get affected by this card is like uh, sword. They don't want their guys becoming one ones. Uh, Shadow definitely doesn't want their guys becoming one ones, and Dragon also definitely doesn't want their stuff becoming one ones. Same with like Rune and Haven. Definitely doesn't want their guys killing one ones. But yeah, if you match up against like an Agro Bat, an Agro Agro Blood, you're gonna get a kind of extra playing this card. Yeah, Shadow gets destroyed because the Transform effect. All their last words get removed. And it's also a one-sided effect. Seems like a pretty good card. I think you already have like um, Calamitous Curse that also kind of wrecks Shadow. I don't know if you play this over Calamitous Curse because they still have something on the board to beat you down with. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if you want to play in a deck that kind of burns your opponent out really quick. Also, the bats, the rats are burning you too, so it's not that good. I don't know. Not bad. Kind of hard to think of where you want to play it, but if there's like a, if there's a control meta, playing a lot of big creatures, uh, turning them into one ones just seems pretty good. And uh, next card. Elder Mage of Dragon Lore. It, it costs 4 4. And pair summon a dragon. Uh, a dragon's a 5 5, right? Uh, Earthrite, summon a Wind Blast Dragon. Said. Wind Blast Dragon is a 5 5, but has Storm. So pretty much, you get Earthrite in the board, you get a, uh, you get a 5 5 with Storm. Yeah, uh, pretty good. Like, maybe this is the card you want to play in an Earthrite aggro deck. That's finisher. It's already it's already uh, a not eight mana by uh, nine nine split between two bodies. So think of um what's her name Neptune. Neptune is a five five and a, and a four four. It's the same thing, but it costs one more. But it, it has the potential of getting storm, which is better. No 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 Neptune's a seven is a five five and a two two. 
Oh, never mind. I'm gonna have um Happy Ridiculous. No, it's, it's yeah, so this is better. You got four four and a five five. Uh yeah. Seems seems pretty good. And Earthrite for for a for a storm, Earthrite seems pretty good. Seek birth. Hmm. Yeah, definitely pick a sun take two, because it's even without the earth right, it's good. It's a whole lack of stats for eight. Moon has better dragons than dragon, yeah. A lot of a lot of uh, decks have better dragons than dragon. Next we have uh All King Giant. Uh six five point six six. So not bad stats. Discard all Earth Rate Hills from your hand. You gain plus two plus two for each card discard. Each discard card. Also can't be targeted by enemy spells and effects. Hmm. Six six minu, yeah. Like just just like dropping it without any earth sigils in your hand. Seems alright because it's not that easy to remove. Uh, but if you do have some, it can actually make this huge. It depends on how many. Like, if some sigils might not be worth anything to you. Like, you know, some sigils have effects, like fanfare. Some of them, like, if you get off of uh, the, the golem, right? Not. Oh, what's his name? The two drop, right? Two drop gives you a uh, earth sigil. Uh, that sigil is kind of useless. It actually might be worth giving a two plus two, or maybe like a um, a scrap heap golem. Maybe you don't need the the zero two body. You'd rather just give plus two plus two. Think of it like you're playing each of your earth rights for free, and their effect is give plus two plus two instead of whatever they did before. Think of it like that instead of like discarding a card. You're not like losing value. Their value is just going into a different place than they normally would. Mm -hmm. uh, it does die to sweepers though, like decree and uh, growth. And dies to random removal effects like uh, what Shadow has. So it can be removed, but just not that easily. Hmm. Seems uh seems pretty good. Also, like it's a six drop. It's not like late game. It's like. You see, you still probably have an evolve in this turn. Mm hmm Yeah, like you either have to you have to, you have to be a class that can remove it with a board sweeper, or uh, you have to like pile a bunch of, of bodies into this guy. Yeah, play this in Pascal next turn, and then the opponent just cries as you have like a 20-20 beating them down that can't be targeted. Alright. Yeah, like, actually, I need to go over Take-Two. Take-Two is a good card. Definitely a good card. A lot of your sigils might not have much use, and you just uh, throw them into this, and it, uh, it's pretty good. Next we have the, like, one of the craziest cards in the expansion. Nine play points, uh, or four, but it's not really that relevant. Uh, change the cost of all ally followers in your hand to zero. Ally followers can't attack enemy leader. Ally followers... Uh, so this, this is only for the turn, so... Ally followers can't attack enemy leader. Ally followers... Any emotes. Necromancy. <laughs> okay, sorry. 
and allied followers and amulets, fanfare, necromancy, and hands, and earth threat abilities that activate upon being played from hand will not activate. These effects will last until end of turn. Uh, the cards played. So you can't, you can't um, have a bunch, play a bunch of guys with storm and kill your opponent. That's what it pretty much says. Or have like fanfare effects won't work either. They can't like just. Is it, no, like they're, try, they're trying to stop you from killing your opponent one turn. With the, with the effect. But yeah, you can do some crazy combos like. Uh, Hmm. Uh, you can do some crazy combos with Lucifer. You can you can play uh, Relia and uh, evolve all your Lucifers at once and burn your opponent for twelve. Free Hulking Giants, yeah. Free a lot of things. Oh, yeah, Melvi doesn't work with this. I think Melvi was gonna work, but it's uh, the fanfare doesn't go off. That'd be too good. You just do like play as drop a whole bunch of bodies in once. Rena, yeah, Rena. Because things with evolve still work, right? You can still get rush. Yeah, you play this with Rena, and you drop your whole board, like a whole whack of things. You can also like drop three Bahamuts, and their fanfare won't go off. So you can have. Like, play 4-4 four, four, and the three Bahamuts on a turn before you can actually play Bahamut. Kind of ridiculous. Yeah, we'll see. It's like, it has so much potential. But it's also limited by its, um, by its claws here. So it's not like a kill your opponent. It's like maybe, it's like set up your kill for next turn. And hopefully they don't have a huge board sweeper. Hmm. Why not play both? Uh, like have a zero cost DCF and play this. Hmm. Gabriel. Yeah, like not better than DCF, but it's an, it's like an interesting card. Definitely good in take two. It's like at worst a uh, like a free four four. If you're playing like some of the other big big stuff. That's yeah, turn nine. Just drop out. There's a lot of, like a lot of times you've in, in take two, you have a five drop in your hand, and you have a six drop, and that's it. And like something else, like maybe like a like a like an eight drop. You can't play all. You can't. You can't deploy all of them in the same turn. You just have to like slowly deploy them and get re each removed eventually. But you play this, you can just drop them all in one turn. It's hard for your opponent to take two to get rid of it. So, yeah. We'll see if it gets played constructed in any deck, but it's it's tough. And there's better options. That was a uh, Rincraft. <laughs> 